Lafayette, I'm Samantha Sanginito and welcome back to The Vibe. It's going to be a very exciting show today. We have an interview with alumnus and media communications virtuoso Bruce Magan. We heard what you, the students, thought about the midterm elections and we sent very, very brave reporters on location to explore the mysterious fifth floor of Party Hall. All of this is coming up, but first we'll hear what's going on on campus this week from Eric with the weekly calendar. Hey Eric. Thanks, Samantha. We have another great week of events coming up. Here's a sample of what you can expect. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? No? <laughs> All right. Well, then I should tell you that the movie Inception is coming to the Lindbergh Theater this Friday through Monday. This movie is a virtual labyrinth of twists, suspense, and thrills. In other words, it will blow your mind. After all of that intense action, you may feel like taking in something a little more cheerful. Luckily for you, comedian Eddie Ift will be performing live stand-up this Friday starting at 10 p.m. in the Farinon Snack Bar. Eddie has appeared on NBC's hit show Last Comic Standing, as well as shows airing on VH1 and Comedy Central. Stop on by to share a few chuckles with your friends. All right, now it's time to be serious. Serious about changing the world, that is. On Tuesday, November 9th, four Lafayette students from the Davis Peace Project will give a talk about their experiences in organizing a summer program for the children of Bogota, Colombia. Attendees will get the opportunity to meet some of the children they worked with and learn about how they can start making a difference in the lives of others around the world. This event will take place at 12.15 p.m. in Hugel 100. Last but certainly not least, the Chamber Music Society of the Lincoln Center will be presenting two world-renowned pianists, Gilbert Kalish and Wu Han, at the Williams Center for the Arts, next Wednesday starting at 8 p.m. For all of you avid Chamber Music fans out there, this is one event you do not want to miss. That's what's coming up in the week ahead. Quite a busy one we have ahead of us, Samantha. That sounds like a very exciting week. Thanks, Eric. Next up, the Vibes' Maddie Lukowski and Luke Calvano sat down with Lafayette College alumnus Bruce Magan, former head of ABC's Multimedia Group, for some words of wisdom for current Lafayette students. Take a look. Can you kind of explain how, how your role helped evolve ABC and maybe how it helped you know, change you as a, as a person and as a professional? We uh, initially started something called the Alpha Network. Just as a ten ex experiment, the Alpha became Arts, which became, after a merger with the Entertainment Channel, Arts and Entertainment, which is mm -hmm. now includes the History Channel. We then started something called the Beta Network, which became Daytime, Talk TV, and now is Lifetime. We got into a relationship with, the, um, with what is, was a small little regional or state a sports service called ESPN. What skills do you think played the biggest role in attaining your success? I think you, you can't discount uh, working relationships, being able to work with people. Obviously you need a certain level of skill set, but, but uh, there's no substitute for working well with others. And in a small company like ABC was, that was particularly important. Mm -hmm. Getting along with everybody being, always being encouraging. You always want to be encouraging and, and can do. I can do that and doing it. Looking back, um, you know, coming from students, what, what might you have done differently or what might you want to highlight about what you've learned and maybe what you've learned from Lafayette? The one thing that Lafayette does, it seems to me, better than most is it creates leaders. And leaders, leadership comes from confidence. And confidence comes from preparation. And no place that I have ever experienced provides the preparation that Lafayette has. Now maybe you can tell us, do you remember this handsome man? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a credit card with a picture about 25 years ago, and people keep, you know, who is this guy when I, I present it? But uh, I don't remember that at all. Uh <laughs> In these tough economic times, it's certainly nice to hear some real-world advice from someone who knows. All right, next we'll go to Brad from the Lafayette newspaper for a word on the new logo Lafayette will be sporting from now on. Hi, Brad. Hi there, Sam. On October 20th, Lafayette unveiled a new college logo as the end result of over a year of marketing research and as a contemporary representation of the ideals of the college. 
Vice President of Com Communications, Dr. Robert Massa, said that at the core of Lafayette's identity is its ability to have students from different majors work in cr cross-disciplinary teams to solve real-world problems, and that it has become necessary to represent this visually through a logo. Accordingly, the new logo conveys connectedness by joining several of the letters of Lafayette College together. There has been some concern that the college spent a reportedly significant sum of money on the changes, but such changes are, as said by Lafayette senior Martin Melendro, necessary to maintain the public relations of the college as well as attract prospective students. Conclusive evidence as to the effect of the logo will come with the class of 2015. Well, it seems like a nice logo. I don't know how I like the diamond, though. I don't know how I feel about my college having bling. All right. Next, the vibes Ray Van Cleve and Ha Win traversed campus in search of your political views. They were shockingly hard to find. What has been the, the most important issue for you in this election? There's an election? There's an election. I think education should be a bigger issue. So I think we are going to try to solve all other problems. I think the only way of doing it is through education. I'm going to go vote. You're going to go vote? Yep. All right. I'd say that the most important issue for me this election season is the uh, current over-regulation of the economy. And I'd like to see politicians elected who will choose to seriously deregulate it. I think the underlying theme there is just the idea of government control and the fact that the government just can't, like, when the government tries to control things, it just doesn't work. So I think the economy is a great example of that. And my most important issue has been the economy, mainly because it's so bad and I feel it needs to be turned around. Voter with the economy on his mind, any potential voter, whatever the case may be, is very frustrating when they don't see plans and they don't see results and all they hear is talk, 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 fight, fight, fight. There's a write-in portion. I'm sure I could write somebody's name in if yeah, I needed you to. Could, if I don't you could, recognize you could write anyone. your name in if you wanted. Hmm. Is that allowed? Yeah. Okay. You can write anyone's name in. Well, then I think I've made up my mind. Honestly, I think that everybody goes and they look at these names, and some of the names seem cooler than the other names, so they vote for those people. My name is Robert Root. R-O-O-T. It's like under a tree. Now that we know which issues you care about, we have the Vibe Zone Ray Van Cleve here with analysis on the election results. Hi, Ray. Thank you, Sam. <clears throat> Everything sure was shaken up this past election day in Washington when the Republicans took control of the House of Representatives, now holding currently 239 seats, a 239 seat majority, while the Democrats lost 69 seats to now have a 186 minority. The <clears throat> There are still 10 seats to be called. In the Senate, the Democrats held on to their majority and now still have 52 seats in the Senate, losing seven seats to the Republicans. Here in the 15th Congressional District, we elected Tom Corbett to replace Ed Rendell in Harrisburg as governor, as well as Pat Toomey to represent us in the Senate, replacing Arlen Specter, and Charlie Dent to continue representing us in the House of Representatives. All this Republican victory is not doom and gloom for the Obama administration. Sure, there will be some repeals like health care and economic reform, but there will definitely be some progress on issues like campaign finance that Obama's been pushing since his, since his inauguration. Thanks for the results, Ray. Remember to tune in next week once all results have been finalized for an in-depth analysis on the official election results. And now, for something scarier than our political climate and the economy combined, Reporters Eric Mortensen and Andrea True ventured forth from the safety of our studio to investigate the popular myth surrounding the fifth floor of Party Hall. Take a look if you dare. Fifth floor party. I haven't heard about it. Is there a fifth floor? I, I don't I don't really I just don't want to talk about it. I'm gonna go. In terms of what I know about the fifth floor of party, I've heard many a grave and dreadful tale about this place. They there's there's ghosts there up there. No, seriously, there's actually ghosts up there. Ghost of uh, Professor Pardee. He kinda takes up his residence stays up there most of the time. No, I'm sure that George Stevens is floating around up there. I don't really want to find out if that's true or not. 
part of the history of Pardi is the history of the fires. The worst part about the fire is that it had been set deliberately. Former Lafayette College professor of mental and moral philosophy, George Stevens. He was very distressed, plus he was deranged, so he was a very scary guy. While no ghosts were caught on tape, we here at The Vibe would like to caution all students from entering Party Hall during the witching hour. As several of the WAs have reported serious paranormal poltergeist activity, papers just go missing all the time. Thanks for catching up with us, Lafayette, and a very special thank you to alumnus Bruce Magan for taking the time to speak with us. We hope you enjoyed this edition of The Vibe. Don't forget to join us next week when we hear from Susan Fox, VP of Government Relations at Disney via Skype, and you certainly won't want to miss Ashley Ashley Javinet when she joins us in studio for an acoustic musical performance. For any and all information pertaining to this week's Vibe, you can log on to our website at www.sites.lafayette.edu slash the Vibe. Also, we here at the Vibe want to hear from you, the students. So add us on Facebook and tell us what you think. Until next time, as always, keep vibing, Lafayette. <laughs>